Hello, so this is topic number four for banking and financial institutions. Main topic is government banking institutions. Subtopic, we have Land Bank of the Philippines, Development Bank of the Philippines, Philippine Amana Bank. Okay, so basically we'll be having an overview of the existing uh, government banking institutions in our country. So basically these are government owned and controlled corporations. Okay. Basically, what we'll be having in this video are the histories of these three banks and then a bit of information about their services. Okay, so since this is about history, I'm probably just going to read them to you and then uh, do a commentary if I see something interesting about it. Okay, so these are available in their website. Let's start with Land Bank of the Philippines. Okay, so for their history, um, Land Bank of the Philippines is a government financial institution that strikes a balance in fulfilling its social mandate of promoting countryside development while remaining financially viable. So, according to them, historically, Land Bank is, um, what do you call this, intended for uh, farmers and fishermen, uh, the most common uh, type of work back in the day. All right, so let's have the milestone in corporate existence. We have August 8, 1963, uh, as per Republic Act 3844, Agricultural Land Reform Code, uh, they created the Land Bank of the Philippines to finance the acquisition and distribution of agricultural estates for division and resale to small landholders as well as the purchase of the land holding by the agricultural leasee, all right? And then they are authorized, uh, the authorized capitalization is 1.5 billion pesos, initial capital of 200 million pesos, and they have the members of the boards of trustees, so they have the chairman, uh, land bank uh, president and CEO, and then there's one member elected by the holder of preferred shares, Four members, including the head of land authority, now the DAR, DAR, Department of Agrarian Reform. And then we have the uh, tax exemption information on all operations, holdings, equipment, property, income, and earnings. All right. This was back in the day. Of course, currently they are paying certain taxes. Okay. Back then, they are also exempted from cash or stock dividend payments to the national government. And then... Agricultural Credit Administration, ACA, responsible for extending credit assistance to farmers' cooperatives and directly to small farmers. Okay, so these are their uh, responsibilities back in the day. Okay, And then the adoption of bylaws and creation of Board of Trustees. Uh, they adopted the bylaws, established the first organizational chart and manual of operations in 1965. And then they formed the Board of Trustees with the Secretary of Finance as chairman in 1966. Okay. And then in October 21, 1972, uh, as per pre Presidential Decree 27, Tenant Emancipation Act, so emancipation of tenant farmers of private agricultural lands devoted to rice and corn under a system of share crop or lease tenancy whether classified as landed estate or not, okay? Value of land transferred to tenant farmers at two and a half times the average. Harvest of three normal crop years immediately preceding the promulgation of PD-27. And then LBP to collect 15-year land amortizations from beneficiaries for the cost of the land plus 6% interest per annum, okay? So, umbaga tinulungan na no, yung mga tenants, farmers natin na uh, yung lupa na kanilang sinasaka eh mapasa kanila na or kasi sila na yung maging may ari ano and then kumbaga parang finance ng LBP and then uh, yung amortization nila uh, parang credit period amortization period is uh, 15 years and only at 6% interest okay it's a great help for the farmers for them to be able to own the land that they are going to work on and then we have July 21, 1973, by virtue of Presidential Decree 251-251, Revitalizing Land Bank, um, because LBP was deficient and inadequate both in capitalization and in organization structure to meet the implementation requirements of agrarian reform, 
the bank was revitalized. Okay, so this was back in 1973. So they experienced the deficit and adequacy back then. Granted universal or expanded commercial banking powers to LBP and established LBP as the universal bank with a social mission of spurring countryside development. Okay, so land bank is classified as a universal bank, okay, expanded commercial bank. And then uh, they were established to, you know, spur countryside development to cross-subsidize agrarian land transfer and loans to small farmers and fisher folk. So their intended beneficiaries are really small farmers and fishermen. Expanded LBP's powers to include lending to agricultural, industrial, home building, or home financing projects and other productive enterprises to ensure LBP's financial stability and sustainability. Okay. Uh, basically, uh, the different, there are different types of banks, and then most of the commercial banks, they do lend money mostly to businesses, uh, private companies, and then they, re they rarely provide uh, loans to small farmers and fisher folk. And so the government has the land bank to do that for uh, those uh, citizens, for those uh, people, right? Empowered LBP to grant loans to farmers, cooperatives, associations to facilitate production, marketing of crops, and acquisition of essential commodities. Okay. And then uh, it also mandated uh, LBP to provide timely and adequate support in all phases involved in the execution of the agrarian reform. Okay. So, medyo matagal na itong agrarian reform natin. Increase authorization capitalization to 3 billion pesos, although not necessarily the actual capitalization that they have. Okay, remember when they started, um, 200 million lang, yung kanilang initial capitalization, right? 200 million, pero yung authorized capitalization is 1.5 billion. Although, of course, currently, uh, it's probably more than this already. All right, and then... This is still in 1973. Uh, increase the members of the board of directors to seven. So they have the chairman from the Secretary of Finance. We have the vice chairman, LBP president, and then we have the members, ex officio. Uh, the Secretary of Agrarian Reform, Secretary of Labor, and then three members elected annually. And then they are still exempted from taxes, national, provincial, municipal, and city taxes and assessments. Back in the day, okay? In 1977, they had a reorganization. LBP formed three major sectors, agrarian, banking, and operations, to strengthen operations and ensure long-term viability. All right. And then in 1982, July 8, Executive Order 816, transfer, transfer of ACA to LBP. What's ACA again? Um, Agricultural Credit Administration. So basically, I think this is some sort of lending for agricultural purposes. All right. So uh, transferred, this was transferred to LBP to adopt an integrated approach in the provision of financial assistance to agrarian reform. Farmer beneficiaries, a single institution is preferred. Okay. ACA was abolished and its functions, loans to small farmers were, were transferred to LBP. All right. And then in 1987, July 22, by virtue of Executive Order 229, C-A-R-L, what's this? Uh, created the Presidential Agrarian Reform Council, P-A-R-C, as the highest policy-making and coordinating body of the Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Program, CARP, to ensure, to ensure timely and effective delivery of the necessary support services, which is mostly uh, the financial uh, assistance. Established the Agrarian Reform Fund, they are fee with an interim amount of 50 uh, billion pesos to cover the financing requirements of CARP with appropriations coming from the proceeds of the Asset Privatization Fund, sorry, Asset Privatization Trust and the Presidential Commission on Good Governance, Good Government. Okay, and then FBs, what are these? To pay for lands acquired and redistributed by the government in 30 equal Annual amortizations at 6% per annum with the first payment due one year after resale. Annual amortization should not exceed 10% of the land's annual value of gross production. Okay. 
and then LBP to provide assistance to landowners through investment information and counseling assistance. Uh, they're guiding them in making uh, sound decisions, wise decisions. Conversion and or exchange of LBP agrarian reform bonds to and from government stocks with government assets. And then marketing of LBP agrarian reform bonds. Okay. And then in 1988, June 10, we have Republic Act 6657. Uh, what happened or the following broaden the coverage of agrarian reform to include all public and private agricultural lands, including other lands of the public domain so to, suitable for agriculture, agriculture. And then we have the payment to landowners at 25 to 35 percent cash and the balance in 10 year agrarian reform bonds with a yield of 91 day T bills. Okay, so kumbaga yung mga landowners na. Uh, ng private and public uh, agricultural lands, okay, uh, parang tawag dito, parang kinuha siya ng government, okay, to be used for agricultural purposes, and then yung payment is 25 to 35 percent cash, tapos yung balance is uh, through the 10-year agrarian reform bonds. Parang siyang T-bills, treasury bills, ano, merong interest rate, pero mababa lang. Pero at least assured, uh, okay, Authorized LBP to collect from the FBs payment uh, for lands awarded to them in 30 annual amortizations at 6% per annum. Okay, so kumbaga yung land is binigay dun sa mga farmer, beneficiaries. Tapos, syempre hindi siya yung bigay na libre. Ano, kumbaga tinulungan sila na uh, mapasa kanila or maging pag-aari nila yung agricultural lands. Okay, bilang sila rin naman yung uh, nagle-labor para magtanim doon, mag-harvest, okay? Kumbaga, assistance, tinulungan, parang financing, okay? So, yun, uh, 30 annual amortizations, pero yung interest rate is mababa, 6% per annum lang, okay? Kasi sila naman ay farmers and fisher folk. Pero this is mostly for farmers, okay? Farmer beneficiaries. And then, establish LBP as the financial intermediary of the CARP, the agrarian reform. And then on uh, 1990, June 14, by virtue of Executive Order 405, CARP and CARP land valuation. So they transfer the primary responsibility of determining land valuation and compensation for all lands covered under CARP from the DAR to LBP. Okay, from the Department of Agrarian Reform, binigay na siya sa LBP. Okay, pinasa yung responsibilities on land valuation and compensation. Okay. And then they accelerated and streamlined certain procedures in land valuation and compensation. LBP created regional land valuation and landowners compensation offices to carry out land valuation and compensation. Okay. Basically, ito'y para dun sa mga lands uh, suitable for agricultural purposes tapos kinukuha ng government to be used for that purpose. Pero syempre, hindi naman siya kinukuha ng libre or walang bayad. Ano? Shada namang tag life yun. So, meron compensation din. Ibinavalue yung land, tapos binibigyan nila ng compensation. Uh, in this year, 1990, pinasa na kay LBP yung responsibility na yun. Okay, and then in 1995, February 23, Republic Act 7907 amended LBP Charter. So, in increase ang author authorized capitalization to 9 billion pesos. Establish LBP as an official government depository. Uh, ang government funds din naka-deposit ay sa land bank. Okay. Increase the members of the board uh, to nine. Composed of chairman, secretary of finance pa din, vice chairman, LBP president and CEO. Members, uh, secretary of agrarian reform, secretary of labor, agriculture, and then two representatives from agrarian reform beneficiaries, and then two representatives from the private sector, okay? 1995, July 25, EO 267. National government to issue agrarian reform bonds to be used by LBP for land transfer payments. Segregation of the accounts of CARP-related transactions from the books of LBP. Why? CARP accounts and AR bonds were previously part of LBP's books and adversely affected LBP's financial position, leverage, and capital adequacy ratios. Oh, okay. So, this is why. Okay. Hiniwalay yung accounts ng CARP-related transactions kasi, you know, medyo mababa talaga siya than the norm for the banking industry. 
Pero since, you know, inatasa ng LBP na sila yung mag-provide ng services na yon to uh, our farmers and fisher folk, so medyo in a way, talagang mababa yung performance ng mga uh, services na yon Okay? So, hiniwalay para yung uh, performance, financial position ng LBP is mapakita na uh, at par naman siya with the other banks din naman. Okay? And then in 1998, August 25, in increase ang authorized capital alert to 25 billion pesos by the Department of Finance and the President of the Philippines. Okay? So basically, yung provided na history dun sa kanilang website is only up to this point. Okay? So our discussion would also be up to this point. Although, uh, siguro sa, uh, we will provide a separate vision na lang on the current uh, situation nito mga banks na to, ano, LBP. Okay, so we have now the financial services provided by land bank. Pero ang discuss ko lang dito is more on deposits, especially savings, and then yung kanilang mga dollar accounts, okay? So deposits. At land bank, we offer you a variety of deposit options that help you manage and access your hard-earned money via ATM, over-the-counter, and digital banking. Whether in peso or in foreign currency, a land bank account is more than just uh, kept safe but also grown. Peso, an interest-bearing peso savings account where in deposit transactions are made over the counter and true cash deposit machine during official banking hours or days. Savings, on savings, it's an interest-bearing peso savings account where in deposit transactions are made over the counter then through cash deposit machines during official banking hours and days. All right, and then we have the ATM savings account. Uh, it's an interest-bearing Peso savings account where in deposit transactions, again, made over the counter, cash deposit machines during official banking hours. Withdrawal transactions may be done over the counter or at any bank net ATMs with the use of, you know, ATM app. Cashless purchases may also be done through any point of sale terminal of partner merchants from department stores, supermarkets, and accredited establishments bearing the bank net logo. Right, so ang target market nila dito for individuals, um, ito yung requirements nila, no? at least 7 years of age, kaya yung mga bata ini-encourage na from a young age turuan ng mag-ipon sa banko. Okay? Ang discouragement lang naman sa mga bata is, you know, kapag ginamit ng magulang yung kanilang savings, binidraw ng magulang ginamit for something else. Okay? Tapos hindi binanggit dun sa bata. And then yung bata nag-expect na meron lang shit savings. So, it's a little discouraging. Anyway, okay, so anyway, continuing on, so able to read and write, not suffering from any legal disability, and then with credible identification. Normally, nahihingin sila ng TIN sa SSS for the adults, of course. Pero kung minor pa lang naman, edi, you know, school ID, birth certificate, ganyan. Alright, and then they have this, uh, what do you call this, specific savings accounts, Easy Savings Plus, ESP, premium savings accounts which offer higher interest rates than regular savings and are tired based on ADB levels. Uh, tired, ibig sabihin may bracket, kapag mas mataas yung ADB mo, average daily balance, so mas mataas yung uh, interest rate na ma-earn yung account mo. Target market, uh, same lang, at least 7 years of age, literate, able to read and write, not suffering from any legal disability, and with credible in identification. And then another uh, savings account nila, high yield savings account, HISA. Uh, PESA account wherein funds of a specific amount are given predetermined competitive rates for a fixed term. Passbook also serves as a proof of deposit. HISA account is offered to institutional clients only, all right? So target market nila, government line and detached agencies, GOCCs, government-owned and controlled corporations, government financial institutions, GFIs, local government units, LGUs, and private institutions. So, walang individual, okay? Uh -huh. Normally, on hold pati sila, no? Kasi predetermined competitive rates for a fixed term. So, let's say 90 days, so certain rate. Kapag mas matagal, 180 days, mas mataas yung rate. Pag one year, mas mataas yung rate. Ganyan, okay? High yield savings account. Regular passbook savings account, this is the next uh, product nila, an interest-bearing PESA account which requires presentation of a passbook for deposit and withdrawal transactions. Okay, just, this is more on for security purposes, you know. Uh-huh, just to ensure na yung meron kang record, you can monitor, you can supervise, 
uh, normally this is uh, what do you call this suggested for companies okay businesses target market we have individuals at least seven years of age literate not suffering from any legal disability and with ids institutional so government line agencies gocc's and lgus and then also private corporations cooperatives partnerships associations and other duly registered organizations all right and then for their dollar accounts so yung mga explanation and some of the specific services dollar and interest bearing dollar savings account with a minimum initial deposit and required monthly average daily balance of hundred dollars and requires presentation and passbook for deposit and withdrawal transactions easy dollar pension an alternative payment scheme whereby the monthly pension or benefit of pensioners or beneficiaries of various u.s federal agencies residing in the philippines is directly credited to their savings account maintained in the land, with land bank okay so the u.s pensioner or beneficiary has the option to open either an individual peso savings account or individual dollar savings account okay so we get benefit for u.s veterans or u.s pensioners mm -hmm. uh, where are we so U.S. dollar savings account, an interest-bearing dollar account which requires the presentation, a passbook for deposit and withdrawal transactions, target market, at least 7 years of age, mga mayaman, ano, mga bata pa, naka-dollar account na, literate, not suffering from any dis legal disability, with credible identification, uh, with regards to institutions naman, any government line agencies, GOCCs and LGUs, private corporations, co-op, partnerships, associations, and other duly registered organizations. And then they also have U.S. dollar time deposit. So, parang treasury bills lang din. Ano? Specific amount of funds in dollar which earns interest at a predetermined uh, competitive rate for a fixed period of time or term with a certificate of time deposit, CTD, as proof of deposit. Okay? So, ganun din. Tired siya. Depending on how long uh, yung holding period, let's say 90 days, 180 days, or 1 year, 2 years, ganyan. So, mas matagal, mas mataas yung rate. And of course, mas mataas yung uh, absolute value nung investment mo, nung deposit mo. So, mas malaka rin yung uh, rate of return. Okay? Target market individuals, um, at least 7 years of age, literate, not suffering from any disability, with credible identification, institutional, government line agencies again, GOCCs, LGUs, private corporations, co-op partnerships, ASOC, and other duly registered organizations. And then, meron din silang HISA, pero dollar. High yield US dollar time deposit. A US dollar denominated special time deposit product that earns a higher interest than the regular time deposit account. Okay? Mostly, ang required naman dito sa HISA is higher amount than ng uh, deposit all right and next we have the development bank of the philippines okay so this is uh what do you call this from their website as well so let's begin with uh, information about the bank so in the philippines development financing institutions play a pivotal role in the quest for sustainable growth and development and at the helm of the country's march towards progress is the Development Bank of the Philippines, DBP. As the country's preeminent development financial institution, DBP has taken upon itself the strategic task of influencing and accelerating sustainable economic growth through the provision of resources for the continued well-being of the Filipino people. It sounds nice, right? The DBP under its new charter is classified as a development bank and may perform all other functions of a thrift bank. Its primary objective is to provide banking services, principally to cater to the medium and long-term needs of agricultural and industrial enterprises with emphasis on small and medium-scale industries. Okay, So yung land bank kanina, we've seen they're more on agricultural reforms, uh, farmers, fishermen. Okay, at ang DBP, uh, more on, what do you call this, industrial, ano, uh, Medium and long-term needs of agricultural and industrial enterprises, emphasis on small and medium-scale industries. Okay, tapos classification niya para siyang thrift bank, whereas yung land bank is universal bank, expanded commercial bank. Okay, 
The affairs and business of the bank are directed and its properties managed and preserved and its corporate powers exercised by the BOD, Board of Directors, consisting of nine members appointed by the President of the Philippine, of the Republic of the Philippines. The Chief Executive Officer of the bank is also the President who is elected by the Board of Directors. The President is also the Vice Chairman of the Board. They did not, they did not specify if it's the president of the DBP or the president of the Philippines. I think it's the elected president, not necessarily the president of the Philippines, okay? DBP history, so DBP's history can be traced back during the Commonwealth when the early infrastructure for development financing was laid by the government, okay? So 1935, the National Loan and Investment Board, NLIV, was created to coordinate and manage government trust funds such as the Postal Savings Funds and the Teachers Retirement Fund. Okay, And then in 1939, the Agricultural and Industrial Bank, AIB, which absorbed the functions of the NLIB, was created and started to harness government resources until the outbreak of war. This is this during the wartime. 1947, the government created the Rehabilitation Finance Corporation, RFC, under RA number 85, which absorbed the assets and took over the functions of the AIB. Okay, so from NLIB, nagisang AIB, that was from AIB in absorption now, RFC. The RFC provided credit facilities for the development of agriculture, commerce, and industry, and their construction of properties damaged by the war. In 1958, the RFC was reorganized into the Development Bank of the Philippines. Okay? So in 1958, saka pa siya naging DBP, yung name niya. The change in corporate name marked the shift from rehabilitation to broader activities. With an initial capital of 500 million pesos subscribed by the government, the DBP expanded its facilities and operations to accelerate national development efforts. This forward trust saw the establishment of a network of branches throughout the country. Okay, so basically, ang nag-fund ay government. Ano? So it's also GOCC. The DBP tapped both foreign and local fund sources to complement its capital resources. Credits were obtained directly from international financial institutions okay later we'll be discussing this i think it's the last topic and i mind international financial institutions anyway the dbp the dbp delivered to the economy substantial benefits in capi capital formation employment generation and increased revenues particularly in the countryside so basically this is a, a chain reaction i know capital formation uh, you have your depositors putting their money in their banks the banks would lend to businesses and on businesses so they would have their capital from the banks or financial institutions since they're going to operate a business they would need to hire people to work for them so employment generation and then of course they would generate revenues they would be profitable if they do well so increased revenues okay especially in the countryside because um, dbp is targeting agricultural and industrial industries small and medium scales okay so you have that in the late 70s and early 80s however its viability was undermined by an increasing number of non-performing accounts following a period of economic difficulty okay so there's some sort of you know financial troubles 1969 construction of the dbp head office building which was completed in 1971 1986 former president Corazon aquino issued eo number 81 which provided for the 1986 revised charter that called for a cleanup of dbp's books stop reorganization and infusion of initial operating budget the, re the rehabilitation program restored its financial viability and dbp resumed lending operations okay so after no you know economic difficulty financial difficulty they re some sort of restarted they constructed their head office that was elders and eo issued they had their cleanup, reorganization, tapas infusion of initial operating budget, which would help them to, you know, restart, to start a new. With the transfer of non-performing assets together with liabilities in June 30, 1986 to the national government. Oh, so they transferred it to the national government. Sila na ba yung bahalang mag-collect Okay, anyway, the DBP or... 
Oh, sorry. The net performing assets, this could refer to the receivables or probably investment properties, which could be used technically by the government. Okay. It's possible that, you know, the DDP did not have the manpower or the infrastructure to simply utilize the non-performing assets, okay, which in which case the national government would be of great help with that, okay. The DBP implemented an institutional strengthening program covering a thorough revision of the credit process, okay, and a training program for the intensive implementation of new lending trusts. In a way, so they probably uh, revisited their uh, credit process, the credit requirements, how they are evaluating the borrowers, okay, so there were changes that could have helped in the improvement, okay. The bank likewise reopened its lending windows for housing, agriculture, and small and medium scale industries. And then in 1995, the DDBP was granted an expanded banking license and attained universal banking status, okay. So currently, it's also a universal bank, all right, but uh, they are operating like a thrift bank. I don't know. The intro was a bit confusing. Anyway, from here we can see that they are technically classified as a universal bank. In 1998, former President Fidel V. Ramos signed RA 8523 amending the BP's 1986 charter. Among the major provisions incorporated in the new DBP charter were the increase of authorized capital stock from $5 billion to $35 billion and the creation of the position of president and CEO. All right. These developments paved the way for the pursuit of other activities that allow the bank to fulfill its development mandate more meaningfully. Today, DBP sharpens its development focus as the country's infrastructure bank the bank spurs national growth by funding projects that raise the economy's competitiveness, focusing on sectors with the biggest and most uh, immediate impact on every Filipino's well-being. DBP spearheads infrastructure projects such as roads, highways, road to market projects, power and water generation and distribution, schools and hospitals. Okay. So what I have here are Parang pinakang summary na lang. Ano? So, they have deposit products, current and savings account. Uh, under ng savings account, they have peso account, US dollar account, young earners savings account, pensioners account, wisdom account, premier payroll account with payroll savings plan, and then the EC card account. Term deposit or time deposit, they have option savings, special savings, regular time deposit, wisdom time deposit, high earner time deposit, Deposit, <laughs> special investors, resident visa, DBP deposit price on bond service. Um, okay, sorry. And then they have special and other services, uh, insurance and managers check, demand draft, foreign currency denominated bank draft, usually used for um, international trade, important export, uh, foreign currency exchange dealership, centralized posting of internal revenue allotment, nagbabayad sa BIR, okay, pwedeng sa nila. Servicing of government's modified disbursement scheme. So they are also a depository of the government funds uh, together with the LBP. And then acceptance of payments or remittances for SSS and field health, electronic tax filing and payment system, and CO collections for the Bureau of the Treasury, payroll servicing. Basically, LBP also has base services and then also current accounts, all right? And then they have this for personal banking, deposit products, ATM services, fund transfer services, fund transfer remittance services, DBP easy banking, special and other services. Corporate and institutional banking, they have investment banking and capital markets, trade products and services. Uh, DBP general uh, digital banking portal, electronic banking, rediscounting line facility for financial institutions. Okay, and then they have development lending. I think this is uh, their lending arm. Infrastructure and logistics, micro, small, and medium enterprises, environmental and climate change, and then they have the social services and community development, some sort of CSR. Okay. On the part of LBP, they have LBP lending. All right. Next, we have Philippine Amana Bank. Again, this information are from their website. 
Okay, so I've never heard about, you know, Philippine Amana Bank. Um, it's only after researching for the syllabus content that I've uh, heard about this bank. Okay, so basically Amana Bank is the only, the first and only Islamic bank here in the country. Okay, and technically it's a GOCC as well, so it's government owned. So for the history, um, in 1973, we have Presidential Decree Number 264, which created the uh, Amana Islamic Bank with an initial capitalization of 50 million pesos. So intended to become a development bank, it invested 75% 75, 75 of its total loanable funds on providing, among others, reasonable, medium, and long-term credit facilities for the people of the Muslim-dominated provinces in Cotabato, South Cotabato, Lanao del Sur, Lanao del Norte, Zulu, Basilan, Sambuanga del Norte, Sambuanga del Sur, and Palawan. Okay? So, these are Muslim-dominated uh, provinces, so basically it's catering to uh, those areas. In 1974, Presidential Decree Number 542 returned the direction of the bank to adopt the no interest principle in Islamic banking and partnership principles. However, the lack of recognition and support of Islamic banking in the country made the bank less competitive in the predominantly conventional banking in the country, of course. So basically, they have a specific uh, intention. So essentially, they would not be able to really compete with the other um, banks in the country. So in 1990, the bank became a universal bank through the enactment of Republic Act Number 6848, otherwise known as the Charter of Al Aman Islamic Investment Bank of the Philippines (AAIIBP), with an authorized capital stack of 1 billion pesos, consisting of 10 million common shares. Its mandate is primarily to participate in the socio-economic development of the autonomous region of Muslim Mindanao (ARMM). By promoting and utilizing Islamic banking, financing, and investment in agricultural, commercial, and industrial ventures in the region (ARMM), by mid 1990, three of its uh, branches, Cotabato, Marawi, and Hulu, began accepting and transforming ordinary deposits into Islamic deposits. The other branches have been transacting both conventional and Islamic banking products, services, and facilities. From 1990 to 2007, AAIIBP managed its operation with the support of the Bureau of Treasury. On October 30, 2008, the Development Bank of the Philippines obtained ownership of the 99.9% .9 shareholdings by acquiring the shares of the national government, SSS and GSIS. Oh, okay. So it's now a subsidiary of DBP. It was on November 14, 2007 when DBP approved the acquisition of AAIIBP and on July 16, 2008, it took over full control of AAIIBP's operation. On October 22, 2009, the Monetary Board under the BSP approved the bank's five-year rehabilitation plan. Okay, so maybe they are uh, experiencing some difficulties, they needed rehabilitation, which focused on four corporate strategies for ours, namely recapitalization, restoration of financial viability, reorganization, and reforms, institutionalization. Under the rehabilitation plan, AAIIBP is allowed to continuously do both conventional and Islamic banking. All right, so I think you. Uh, what they're referring to here as the Islamic banking is in accordance with their principles, your Islamic principles, which may not be, you know, in accordance with the conventional banking system that we have. In November 2009, DBP marking the partial completion of recapitalization strategy infused 1 billion pesos capital to AAIIBP. All right. And then we have their vision to be the leading and choice Islamic financial institution providing alternative banking services in response to the emerging global Islamic markets and to promote and accelerate the socioeconomic developments of the Islamic communities in the Philippines by 2022. Okay, that's near already. That's next year, right? They're probably going to revise their vision. Okay, the bank today, al -Aman Islamic uh, investment Bank of the Philippines, AAIIBP, is a universal bank 
authorized to perform and provide Islamic banking, financing, and investment services pursuant to RA 6848, otherwise known as the Charter of the al Aman Islamic Bank of the Philippines of 1990. In 2008, AAIBP became a subsidiary of DBP, owning 99.9% of its capital stock, which introduced its current logo and tag name, al Amana. Sorry, Amana Islamic Bank, all right? And then they have this deposit products, Islamic. So they have this current account, savings account, general investment account and their profit sharing scheme, pilgrimage, savings plan, and then the, uh, how do you pronounce this? Basic savings. And then for the conventional, of course, they have the current savings and then the time or special savings. Other services, they also have ATM, collection agreement, payroll service, fund transfer, local and international, and then OFW remittance. Islamic financing products under the following principles. Um, sorry, I could not, I cannot pronounce these words. And then, yeah, this one. I'll provide the script in the description so you can read this, or you can also visit their uh, websites so you, so you can check out this information. As an Islamic uh, investment bank, the bank may also engage in issuance or assist the government in Islamic investment participation by issuance of investment participation certificates. Uh, was this? Mogorada Mo or Sokok Islamic bands, debentures, collaterals, and or the renewal or refinancing of the same with the approval of the Monetary Board of the Central Bank of the Philippines, BSP, to be used in its financing operations for projects that will promote the economic development, primarily of the autonomous region, ARMM. As a universal bank, the bank also offers developmental and car loans to private and public sector and other Islamic investment assistance. Today, AAIIBP has nine operating banks in the cities of Cagayan de Oro, Cotabato, Dabao, Iligan, General Santos, Marawi, Makati, Sambuanga, and one in Hulusulu. Mission of the bank uh, to become a full Islamic bank and afford Filipinos of the blessings and benefits of Islamic banking, financing, and investment. So majority of the Filipino Muslims are in ARMM. So Amana Bank is operating in those uh, places. Okay. So again, for the missions to become competitive, to be competitive and significant in the banking industry, to become a key player in the global Islamic banking and investment market, participate in all phases of development, especially in the ARMM and Mindanao, to serve as an arm of the government. In addressing poverty alleviation, especially in Muslim Filipino communities across the country by delivering them the goodwill and simplistic Islamic banking and financing that are responsive, sensitive, and suitable to their way of life. And then to equip Muslim Filipinos with Islamic banking and financial education that can help them improve their economic condition and make them a significant economic force of the nation. All right. So basically, in this video, we have the government banking institutions, the government-owned and controlled corporations. We have the land bank, a development bank, and then the Philippine Amanda Bank. All right. So we have the overview, we have their history, and then the current services that they are offering. Of course, uh, information about themselves and uh, their intention for the create for their creation and how they are trying to contribute in the economic development and growth of. Uh, the Philippines. All right. So that's it for this video. Again, I'm going to link the script in the description below so that you can download it and read the content on your own if you want to. Okay. So that's it for this one. Thanks and bye.